this is the hot mess that is life. I know what you're thinking. No, oh, these are huge, thick slices. That's life. That's life. That's what all the people say. It's been five minutes and I still haven't started recording anyway. So that kind of stuff happens. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I feel crazy. I ate a lot today. I know this is like a lot. This is a lot for the intro. And I, I normally cut this stuff out. We'll see if I cut it out. If I don't cut it out, I don't cut it out. But hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is another part of our HackerRank C++ series. But I'm going to record this. All right. So this is diagonal difference. Given, and this is an easy problem, max score is 10. Given a square matrix, calculate the absolute difference between the sums of its diagonals. For example, the square matrix array shown below. Um, I have not gone over matrices. Is that is that the proper plural? I haven't gone over matrixi, matrices or matrices. Whichever one is correct, put that down in the comments below. I haven't gone over those. Uh, my friend, he goes over them actually, and I'm gonna link that right here so you can check that video out. Um, he goes into depth of those, but basically these are just 2D arrays, and and, and it's even like a matrix is an even 2D array, I mean, like even even in the way that like you know, it's an array of an array, it's an array of arrays, and the arrays are the same are the same size. So like, let's say you have an array of three and then each item in that array is an array of length three. So that becomes, and that's exactly this um, example here. This is index zero, zero, index zero, one, index zero, two, index one, zero, index one, one, index one, two, index two zero index two one index two two so this is a 2d array and that would just be like the same kind of, that that's going to be the kind of way that we access items in that array so let's get back into this problem given a square matrix calculate the absolute difference between the sums of its diagonals right so we're, they're going to have this diagonal, 1, 5, 9, and this diagonal, 3, 5, 9. And we're going to have to add these up and then get the difference between the sums of the two, right? 1 plus 5 plus 9, 15. 3 plus 5 plus 9, 17. And the absolute difference is um, 15 minus 17, that's 2. Uh, because it would be negative two, but it's the absolute difference, so it's gonna be two. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Functional description, diagonal difference, right? It takes in an int array, um, nm, an array of integers, and uh, we gotta return the absolute diagonal difference. Cool, cool. Input format. It's just showing us like okay this is gonna be three rows and three columns and then because this is a square matrix that's what I was getting at my bad yes square matrices um, will be like an even like three by three four by four nine by nine square matrices sorry about that don't fight me or I mean fight me if you want I'm not sure if you're gonna get that much out of it um, I mean, I, I think we understand the problem enough that we can start coding. Um, cool. So here we have it. This is an array. So what we do to traverse through the array is loop through it. So we're getting a vector, right? And we can get its size by, you know, okay. So look, here's what I'm thinking. We're going to need this normally when you traverse through a matrix, right? You're gonna do like a double, a double for loop, right? Because you'd want to get like index zero, index zero, right? And then that's how you're gonna iterate through these like so. 
But you can do this without looping twice, right? If you have one thing pointing to this item and one thing pointing to this item, right? So like one is pointing at index zero, one is pointing at the last index of the array. And then as we move through that um, for loop, we just increment this by one and we decrement this by one. So then like, okay, so this is index zero, zero is gonna be like the one thing we're holding on to. And then we increment that by one, um, index one, one, and then we increment that by one again, index two, two. Um, so like this, this part, I is staying the same. I'm gonna call this I. So I, we're gonna just keep incrementing like so. And then we'll have like J. So it'll be of I of J. So I of J, J is gonna start here. And then we're gonna decrement by one. So then J is gonna be, so like, okay, so I is zero and J is two right then we as this goes up one we increment that by one we decrement j by one so now j is going to be one i is going to be one we hit here and then we do that again we decrement j but we increment i so now we're at i is equal to two j is equal to zero and that's how we're going to get the other di di diagonal wow why can't i talk today it's all the food. I'm telling you, my stomach is is acting up. It's groggy right now, guys. Ladies and gents. Oh, what did I do? All right. Um. Okay. Cool. Let's start it. This is what I mean. So, like, you have a um. You can have your for loop. Like, you remember for loops. i is less than array dot size to get the size of this vector um and then we increment that right um thing we may want to do is grab the different or the sums of each so int diagonal sum one is zero and Diagonal sum two is zero. Okay, so these are the sums, and we have int i equals zero, i is less than array dot size, i plus plus. Um, yeah, we can also have j is the same as array dot size. Let's do that. J is gonna be array dot size minus one because the size of the array is three and we want j to whoops there we go so we want j to start off as two okay so we're going to go through this array i is going to be zero j is going to be two and then when we get to the bottom of this for loop we're going to decrement j okay Cool. Is everyone following along so far? Yes. If yes, I'll continue to go. If not, pause the video. Watch back. I don't know how that's going to I can't take questions. Write in the comments if you were lost at this point or if you're keeping up. I think you're probably keeping up. You're probably keeping up. My bad. Okay, so. We have our diagonal sum 1. Right? So like, okay, so that first one is always gonna be I, I, because it's going diagonal. So it's gonna be I, 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 I. This one is gonna be I, J, I, J, I, J, okay? So we're gonna do D sum one plus equals array at i i and d sum two we're incrementing it by array at i j 
okay? And, um... Yes. I think that will get us our sums. And then we just have to get the difference, right? So, in difference is going to be, oh, it's the absolute value of d sum one minus d sum two. How do you, what is the thing, is it? Is that it? And then we don't even have to make that, we could just, re just, ooh. we can just return that one time. Return abs d sum one and d sum two. Does that, is that? I don't even know if that's, um, okay, that's how you do the, okay, good. This is how you do the absolute, but this was a wild guess that I just threw in there. But yes, absolute abs is a math, like a built-in function, right? Uh, dang, I still didn't make that video yet. But essentially you have built-in functions and then you have uh, programmer made functions or, you know, you know, we make the functions. But this language has built-in functions. This abs, look, if you have heard it actually tells you, returns the absolute value of x, so it takes in a number, it returns the absolute value of that. But this is one of the built-in functions that we have access to. Cool. From like a C math library. All right. Does that make sense? Let me run the code real quick, see if it's passing all the test cases. Sweet. All right, so we're passing all of the test cases. Congratulations, you've won. Nice. Okay, so yeah, this is what we did to get our diagonal difference solution. This is just, this is the solution to diagonal difference. I can stop recording. That is the solution for diagonal difference. I think it's a cool one to get into, right? You could have done a nested for loop and have for j equals array dot size minus two, as long as um, j is greater than zero, j minus minus, and that. However, when we're building these solutions, it's good practice to try and figure out more efficient ways to do things, right? A nested for loop is not the best way to go. We try to stay away from nesting for loops as much as possible, when possible. But if it's absolutely necessary, then we can go ahead and nest and be reckless and destroy the town. But that's about it for this video, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're trying to build, I don't know, a community where we can all help each other, where we can all learn and motivate each other. And um, yeah, so if you want to join that community, please subscribe and I will and I will hopefully make more content that you like. If you want to see something other than these, or if you want to see more of these, or if you want to see me do something different, said that in a different way just now, please let me know in the comment section down below, and I will try my best to make it happen. That is it for the video, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, right, we finished the challenge, so you get a high five, and now I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, yeah. It's an absolute nopsy. We don't want it, period.